Hi folks, welcome to today's advanced preview. Today we're looking at the LNER Peppercorn A1, which is uh, developed by one of our third parties. Uh, well known, Victory Works, um, who have done uh, a number of uh, outstanding add-ons. The uh, 14XX, um, 56XX, the Small Prairies, um, and they've all got something in common. They're all Great Western. And uh, I had a chat with Pete earlier on and said, uh, what's going on, Pete? This loco's the wrong shade of green. And uh, yeah, he mumbled something about Derek and Weirdale and then said, don't worry, there's lots more Great Western stuff coming. So, <laughs> so yeah, so Peppercorn uh, uh, K1 is uh, it's a really, really nice steam engine. You're really going to like this. I've been driving this for the last couple of hours and uh, um, I'm a big fan. Uh, so let's start off by just having a look and uh, just some of the liveries in the pack and then I'll talk about what else comes in the pack. So uh, Peppercorn uh, K1, this is the weathered um, the BR lined black livery. Uh, so this is your workhorse engine. Um, then we've got the, uh, the cleaner lined black livery. Um, and uh, then we've got the LNER apple green livery, which of course is only, I think it's only worn by two th number 2005, but uh, it's selectable in the game. <clears throat> right. Um, it's, so uh, my brain's not working tonight. As always, it's sort of a common thing. So that was, th those are the locos in the pack. It's a uh, sort of a passenger freight steam loco. Um, and it comes with quite a lot in the, in the pack actually. So I'm just, I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm scrolling through the manual and I thought I'd tell you about what there is. So it's pep BR lined black with BR lettering pre and post 1956 logos. I'll show you how to do that later on. BR lined back worn, uh, which is uh, that one. Uh, so this is uh, BR lined black, this is BR lined black worn, uh, and then you have the um, LNER green lined livery. All 70 members of the class are represented with correct shed codes, logos and fittings, uh, and there are optional parts for running in all original areas and also preserved running, including overhead cable warning flashes, and, um, and there's also a custom air brake um, gauge which can appear or not, depending on what you're doing. Uh, there are three optional headboards for rail tours, a full cu new custom sound set um, with inside and outside recordings from the last remaining K1, realistic cab with multiple views including the head out and there's also the fully mild modelled firebox with a coal level indicator, that's very cool, I'm going to show you that in a minute. Fully operable tender controls including the shovel which is <laughs> a really neat touch. Um, again I'll be looking at that in a minute, we're going to need to do some, so I'm going to be driving it in advanced mode so you can see the full deal. Uh, custom realistic wheel slip physics, which are very nice. Uh, simulated steam chest, cylinder cock management, meaning if you're in advanced mode and you don't open your uh, cylinder cocks, it will, uh, <clears throat> yes, you, you, you've seen probably on my stream what happens when you don't do that properly. Uh, boiler management with priming damage. This is another really neat um, thing. So if you overfill the boiler with water, you can actually get um, with water spewing out of the chimney and then if it goes too much, then you, it's uh, bad. Let's just leave it at that. Um, I've done that more than once as well. Uh, improved dynamic steam, smoke color and quantity, realistic injector control, uh, realistic boiler water gauges uh, that are affected by gradient acceleration and speed, which is really cool. You see the water gauges bobbing around uh, while you're driving and as you go up a hill, so the water gauges go up uh, appropriately. There's also a blowdown test, which is neat, so I'll, I'll show you that as well. Uh, visual priming effect from the chimney when overfilling the boiler, I've mentioned that. We're opening windows, uh, roof hatch, dynamic lamp settings on both the loco and the tender. Cab light effects including the firebox glow, speedometer light. Guards, whistles when leaving a passenger pickup. Right, rolling stock. So this pack comes with a ton of rolling stock. Um, so British Railways XLNER rolling stock, which has a brand new rich detailed sound set. Um, there are different selectable wheel types on the wagon ID. So by, when you set the number up for the wagon, you can choose what uh, you, one of the digits in there will choose which uh, wheel type you're using. You've got animated handbrakes as well, which have also got sound. So wagons, double 13 ton bolster wagons with four types of loads, single 13 ton bolster wagon, XLNER gas tank wagons, BR pole brick brick carrying wagons, BR 22 ton plate wagons, BR trestle AA wagons, XLNER private owner mineral wagons, five plank, seven plank, uh, and a variety of different um, owner, private owners include, and also British Rail uh, for uh, various loads. There are eight scenarios for the Weirdale and Teesdale network route add-on, 40 quick drive consists with appropriate stock. 
So it's, this is a really, really rich pack. There is an absolute ton of stuff in this. It's absolutely amazing. So we're gonna see quite a bit of this. We're gonna run a scenario. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna run um, a, um, the scenario with the LNER green. We're not gonna run the scenario fully. We're just gonna take a look at the loco so that we haven't got the, uh, the pressures of the, uh, of the game to deal with. So I'm just waiting for that, hello, uh, just waiting for the, uh, the game to load up there uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look around the cab. So well, basically I just wanna play with all the stuff, show you how things work and then we can get in and there's a really cracking scenario that uh, Victory Works recommended that I play for this. So um, it's, uh, yeah, I think I've played it four times and as yet I still haven't uh, uh, made a positive score. So, uh, <clears throat> oops, it's, it's tough, but it's good fun. And I'm playing it in full advanced mode, which does, it does make driving this thing an absolute dream. It really is nice. Right, so as soon as this is finished loading, we will uh, we'll take a look. So what I'm doing is I'm loading um, the, uh, this is with the LNER Apple Green uh, uh, number 2005. And what I need to do, of course, here is turn the audio back on. Siddle Tours is your head code. So we've got different head codes, as, it said in, as I said in the manual. We're not going to run the scenario, so I'm not to be worried about that. Let's take a look outside. So we've got really nice high detail there. You've got um, changeable headboards, so you can press Control 9 to change the different uh, headboards here. Uh, and then control one, two, three, four also give you the different um, uh, the combinations. Um, so we are, oops, uh, let's turn that one off. And then if you press H, you'll get the electric lights. So um, these are more for show during the day, whereas the lights, are, the electric lights, are used during the evening. There we go. Right. So let's have a look in the cab. There's tons to see in the cab. So this is this, um, these are the gauge, so you've got the brake pressure gauge, you've got the uh, steam chest pressure gauge and the boiler pressure gauge. Uh, and here you've got this extra gauge which you can actually switch on and off in the, um, the, when you number a loco you can say whether you want this gauge on or not. This is only present on preserved locos. Um, you can open the roof, we've got, um, let me do it on this side so you can see it. So you've got this board here which you can move out of the way. And then I shut the door, I shut the window. The door, it's a bit small for a door. Um, however, if you don't do that, if you forget, um, then what you'll find is it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't move. <laughs> no, that's cool. I'm not gonna tell you how long it took me to work that out, why a window wouldn't close. <laughs> uh, you've got that obviously on the other side as well. What else have we got here? So you've got your standard complement of controls, regulator, you've got your braking setup, you've got your reverser. Now I'm running this in advanced mode, which means that I can't move the reverser normally. I have to press the lock down, which is this thing here with the E key, and then you can move the reverser. Um, what else have we got? We have got the firebox. So if I open the firebox and press right, you can actually see in the firebox. And what's neat is that the fire is actually going to move up and down depending on the level of the fire. So as we, uh, if I come up here and uh, I start firing, yeah, <laughs> I love that. You put this in and it starts coaling up. And what you'll see is that the level of the fire will gradually change and go up. So uh, it tells you in the manual what the, uh, the rough um, fire match should be for that to be. And it's around about lined up with the, uh, this third row here um, is round about the right place. So it's not far off it now. Right, so let's stop that for the minute. Give it a safety discount. So we've got, um, we've got the uh, lights for the speedometer here. And then up here we have things like cab lights. We have the uh, front and rear lights, which um, turn off. Um, so if we look on the on the front here, you can see we've got rear lights showing now. Um, and because we set to reverse, if we set to forward, then you get the forward configuration. 
Um, you've then got these switches, which are essentially the equivalent of control one, two, three, and four for choosing uh, which of these combinations you want on the on the front. So we've already had requests for all the usuals. So there are a selection of different whistles. So. Some whistles there, so it's different. When you press the B key, you get a different short whistle, and then when you press the space bar, right. So uh, that's your whistles. You've got plenty of uh, plenty of excellent sounds on that. Right, I'm trying to think if I've missed anything just by looking around the cab. You've also got multiple views, so um, you've got your normal view here, you've got your firebox and you've got the right hand side. You've also got a head out view and this is really useful because it means that because, see so normally you press shift 2 and you get this view which means you can't see inside. Yeah, which is still useful but by moving, using this view instead I can still see all of the gauges and they all still work and indeed I can operate the regulator and so forth, so I can still actually drive the loco fully um, from this position, which I actually find really useful. Um, so, I think that's your AWS. There is also, if you notice here, we've got the water level. I don't know if you can see that there. What you can do is do a blowdown test. I'm just waiting for that zip. So if we uh, seal off the, um, this from the, uh, the, what's going on in the boiler, shut that, and then we operate this lever down here, you'll notice that it's evacuated. All the water's gone out. And if we then pull it back, and then we open it back up again, the water will come back in again. And that's a standard test to make sure. So if there's any, any air bubbles anywhere in there, then uh, that's how they, um, they check. And they do that before they start off. So um, if you can, uh, if you do that test, I mean, it's, it's pretty much there for show. It doesn't really do anything, I don't think. But if you want to feel like you're, you're driving more accurately, then you can do that. Um, you've got the whistle here, of course. Um, over here, you've got your injectors. Um, so these are your water. So you've, you've got the water sound there when you actually run it. Now this is the exhaust injector. I'm going to use the live injector just so that we can see it working. And then when you run the live injector, which is this one, if I put it on too much, you just get a hissing sound. And if I pull it back, you'll see you get that sound, which is the sound of the water being pushed into the boiler. Now, I'm going to switch that off and get back to the, uh, that sound. So you could, you've got accurate control over how you do this. So you put the water tap on first, and then come over here and then get that so you're hearing the right sound and then you can, uh, you can um, get, make sure you're putting water into the boiler correctly. Uh, and similarly, if you want to put coal in the fire, open it up, make sure the, the clamp has gone on and do that. And then that will do the fire. You can, of course, um, I should state that the, um, the, the loco comes with simple control support it comes with expert control, so your normal, so you would use this HUD uh, and you can use all the standard firing and driving controls and you don't have to press the E key for this. And then in expert mode you can press control A which will then toggle you into advanced mode and advanced mode you're on your own. You pretty much want to use the F3 HUD or no HUD at all if you're up for that. Um, and then you're using keyboard controls or actually using the cab controls like I was just doing there. So this is the LNER Green version. Um, I think we've pretty much we've looked at everything there is to look at on the uh, on the outside and the inside. It's time probably to actually do a scenario now, and uh, we'll see how we get on with that. It's uh, it should be an interesting ride. <laughs> okay, let me put this on to the um, onto here. Hello again. Uh, while I just change the scenario out for just a moment. So if you've got any questions, um, Victory Works is actually on the chat. That's uh, Karma99. Uh, do ask questions. Um, and if there's anything that uh, 
I can answer on the stream, then the DTGJ is, um, is helping out on the channel and uh, will forward questions over to me to answer here. Um, but uh, yes, VictoryWorks is there uh, on the chat. So welcome to, uh, to Pete. Right, let me start this scenario. And get back to the game. Right, so this scenario we are going to be doing uh, two runs with the with a freight with freight. So we're going to take one load of uh, freight in, in one direction and then take another train back the other way. So there's a bit of shunting, there's a bit of running, a little bit of speed, and some uh, and so it's quite nice variety as well. Haven't really got signals to worry about, which is good, um, but we do have to worry about speed limits. And one thing you'll notice is that this is an unfitted train. It doesn't like to slow down. <laughs> So you'll probably see me doing a lot of overspeeding because I always leave it too late to slow down. I've got used to driving things like 378s where I can just stamp on the brakes and stop on a coin. <laughs> right, so we're running in advanced mode. Like I said, it comes with different modes. If you don't want to run advanced mode, you don't have to. Right, this morning's duty involves taking a long rake of coal wagons to Newton Cap to provide fuel for the brick furnaces. You will then collect the pit filled pole brick wagons from the brickworks there and deliver them to the yard at Consit. To begin, set the points to Shildon Down 21, drive forwards and couple the brake van to the front of your loco. Right, so let's uh, start by going forwards. Release the brakes so you can see the brake pressure gauge. You'll notice that air brake gauge is gone. It's not present on this because it's not the uh, preserved one. So I'm going to skip into this so I can still see what's going on up here. Wait for the brakes to come off. Let's put some power on. Now if I put too much power on, it gets a bit serious. It will actually cause sparks if you get it just right. Of course, what I've forgotten to do is I haven't set the point. <laughs> Fail! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Already failed and we haven't even started yet. So there goes any chance of getting a score. Right, let's reverse back. I got so excited about getting moving, I forgot to change the point. Get back past this point. Our brake van is just here. It's this one here we need to go and get. So we need to, need to ease past this point. Get the brakes on. Watching the brake lever, the brake needle come down, <clears throat> and then the train will come to a stop. We we'll change the uh, the point in front of us, which is that one, and we'll go and get it. Release the brakes. Once the brakes are off, we can then put it back into running. I'm just going to leave the cylinder cocks open for the time being. We don't, we're not moving around, but we are stopping a lot. So, That's a nice whistle. All right, uh, I'll do some more different, some different views once we get moving, but I do need to just watch. These wagons don't like being hit too hard, I found out on two occasions today. So uh, yeah, you just need to hit them a little bit gently. <laughs> Otherwise they get a little bit uh, serious. Things get a bit serious. We've also got steam chest pressure simulation in advanced mode as well, which means when you shut the regulator, you've still got what's in the steam chest powering the engine. So it takes a moment, a few rotations before you actually start slowing down. So <clears throat> like there, I'm just pulsing the regulator up a little bit and then down. And then you get a delayed reaction as it fills the steam chest as we come up to the wagon here. Right. Come on. Okay. 
Right, we're coupled. Now we've got a reverse bag. What we're doing is we're going to put this um, this brake van on the back of that other train on to the right of us. The one that I nearly coupled to a minute ago. Right, so it, yes, it, as I said, it comes with scenarios for the Weirdale and Teesdale line. We're running number three. This scenario is called Bricks Without Straw. <clears throat> so we're just coming back past this point and then we'll go and couple up. We'll get running with some good runs in this scenario as well with the, uh, with the train. So we'll be able to hear this loco um, working hard. The brakes on. Right, now we change that point and we'll go and wait for the brakes to come off again. A bit of power in there. See the steam chest fills up. Put it back into running so we're not wasting steam. Well, any more than having the cylinder cocks open all the time anyway. I'm completely paranoid now about having ever, sh ever shutting the cylinder cocks because uh, I usually shut them too early. And that's bad. End of scenario time. Right, so we're going to put this uh, brake van on the back there. <clears throat> Checking the water level over there. All is good. You want the water level here to be around between half and three quarters. We're actually quite high at the moment, so not a problem. Again, I'm just trying to be a bit gentle here because uh, the wagons don't like being hit hard. They really don't like being hit hard. <laughs> The other thing is having the cylinder cock open, the cylinder cocks open also makes them a little bit more, the throttle controls a bit more gentle. Okay, so let's couple that. <clears throat> Excuse me one moment. Right, we're coupled. Now I'm going to put the brakes on on the brake van and then uncouple it here. <clears throat> right, we now need to reverse back. So what we need to do now is get on the other end of the loco, oh, of, the, of the train, sorry. Right. Our coal and so forth is still okay, but I shall start topping up the water, the fire in a minute. We're going to be hideously late, but that's okay. We're going to enjoy it. Wait for the brake to come down so we can stop. And change that point and then we need to just change this point because we're going to come all the way back here and then come back and back up to the uh, the consist brakes are nearly off okay it's a bit of a slow start to this scenario but uh, it will pay off all right let's get that the cylinder cock shut down you have to watch out, you shut the cylinder cocks, then all of a sudden all that steam you've been throwing out the front goes into the pistons and uh, it takes off like a, a rocket. When you reach the end of the siding, change the point so you can back into shield and down 20 and couple the tender to the coal wagons and brake van. Again, I haven't really moved the cut off because we're, uh, we're not really, I'm not using that much steam at the minute. You can you see the water bobbing up and down in the in the in the glass. It'll be more obvious once the water level gets a bit lower. Do 
The other thing you can do on, on this one uh, is the, the logo on the back here. You can change it if you want to. So you've got British Rail, you've got the line, the wheel, and you've got this, the uh, roundel. I'm going to leave it on British Rail. All right, so let's uh, slow down. And we need to back up and collect our wagon. I really like the sounds of this as, uh, oops, hang on. Hello, sorry about that. <laughs> I like the sounds of this as she starts moving. Lots of creaks. I didn't quite make that, did I? No, not quite. Let's release the brakes. Have another go. Look at that, this is that creaking. Alright, we're hooked up. Well done. Now reverse back past the points to exit the yard. These are just before the bridge and then head on to the main line through Shield and Platform 2 and I head to Newton Cap. Beware this train is unfitted. The wagons do not have brakes and it takes a while to slow down. <laughs> yeah. So we need to release the uh, brake van that we uh, brake that we put on. Release the brake. Now we're reversing first. <coughs> past, just past up there. Now we've got more of a load on. What you need to be careful of is not putting too much steam on. Like that. Which I did, for example. So put it again. I love that. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Turn the brakes off. We've got the brakes wasting steam again. Right, so what are we doing? We are currently reversing our whole train basically back past this point. Just check water levels and so forth. So you can see the water level is still quite high. We haven't really used much. While we're reversing, let's just have a quick look in here. That's not too bad. We can fill that up some more later on. All right, I'm going to put some brake on now. A little bit early. I think we're coming up on the switch on the point now. Yep, there it is. We've got the right uh, when it makes its mind up. Can't convince the train to stop. <laughs> you can stop now. Alright, going forward, wait for the train to stop. Watch that steam chest pressure. Right. We're moving. Right, we've got to get on our way now. Oh, come on. Let's get some sand going so we can speed up. See the sand blowers on the bottom there? How's the boiler pressure doing? Boiler pressure's fine. Brakes are off. 
signal is good. Right, we're on our way, folks. Now, I'm going to bring the uh, cutoff back to accelerating now. And because it's a screw type one rather than the lever, um, you, you don't have to reduce your throttle to zero. So you can just press the E key and reduce the uh, cutoff. Now, as I've said a couple of times, um, it comes with, it's fully supportive of simple controls, Xbox controls, HUD controls, keyboard. It, there's tons of flexibility for how you want to drive it. Um, I'm doing it in full advanced mode so you can see all the features it's got. But if there's bits you don't want to do, then you can use one of the earlier, the, the, the simpler um, access mechanisms. So we're starting to see the water, the water level coming down now, but I'm, I'm fine with that at the moment. So we have a 40 limit, so it's time to get some speed on. Alright, we're coming up on the tunnel. Now's a good time to open the firebox, do you think? <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> You want to be aware when you go when, of the route. When you're going to go down a hill, what you'll see is that the uh, the gauge here, the water level will go down because if you imagine the boiler is going down, the water level, the water level water, water rushes to the front. Um, and see, it's gone down now because we're going down a hill. Now, what we can do here is turn the cab light on just so we can see what we're doing. So let's uh, turn the cab light on. So we've got a 30 limit uh, after we exit the tunnel, but uh, until then, we're doing all right. As you can see, I'm four minutes behind schedule, but that's probably not, it's about on par for how I've achieved today. <laughs> so this train is, uh, like, as it said in the warning, it's heavy, it's unfitted, it's relying on just the loco and the uh, guard in the back to uh, slow the train down. Alright, so I'm going to cut the power and get the brakes on now so we can try and slow down for this 30. You see just how slowly this thing is slowing down. Better. We're coming down a bit better now. We've also got, uh, oh, we're going to go up to 45 in a moment. Didn't quite make that, but that's actually one of the more successful attempts I've had today. So release the brakes. And then put it back on running. Okay, let's check the water level, how are we doing? Right, it's time to get some water in. We're doing all right for speed and so forth. Um, so, water, we have not a lot. We're actually, well, here we are. Let's do the live steam then, uh, the, uh, sorry, the exhaust. Let's put the exhaust water on and put the, uh... that's better. Now, that, the exhaust ejector is going to work um, Injector, sorry, it's going to work based on the regulator being open. You'll notice it's just stopped because I've cut off the steam. Now I've put the regulator back on.
Right, now we can speed up. Although we have got a 15 coming up, which we need to be aware of, and I should probably get slowing down for it now, thinking about it. Right, let's switch to the live steam so that we can get water in. Not quite. That's it, and then we'll get the brakes on. So I've got water going in now. We'll see this. We'll get this up to about this sort of level. You see it's jumping up and down. So there is no precise level, which is exactly how it is normally. So coming down, we're at just about 20 miles an hour, coming into a 15. Oh, I'm gonna make this one. It's the first time I've made this one. Right, release the brakes. Mind you, it looks like the brakes went on. <laughs> Don't forget, if you want to, you can uh, shut windows. Brakes are off, let's put it back in running. I'm going to watch that water and get that off in a minute. So we're going to be making a right turn just here, which is what this uh, signal is indicating. I'll do some flybys uh, when we're doing the, uh, the, the next part of the run, because you can, you can hear more of what's going on. All right, I'm going to stop the water now, so stop the steam. And then stop the tap. Got a green light, so good to keep going. Now we should check the firebox as well. We haven't looked at that in a little while. That's getting pretty, uh, pretty dire actually. Now we're speeding. Great. The brakes are off again. We'll. Uh, it, put it back into running. Because my root knowledge is leaving me behind here, so I can't remember what the. Uh, so we need to get this back up to about that level here. So we're running quite low at the moment. slow this section but we're speeding up again shortly another 45 or 25 actually in a moment and then up to 45 briefly although I don't think we're gonna get to 45 because there's a 15 there is that a tunnel coming up I think I should probably uh, shut this then we don't want to uh, the alternative isn't worth uh, considering as you leave the main line I've just got a minus 1,000 points, superb. Uh, to enter Newton Cap, check the points are set to enter your Newton Cap colliery one. You're to stop there, uncouple from the coal wagons and brake van. So if we look at the map and recenter on where we are, and we look up here, we see that the blue line actually goes over here. It needs to go over there. So change that one and that one, and we're now heading in the right direction. Speed up a little bit. We're not going to get too much sped up because we've got this 15 coming.
Okay. Bear in mind we've got this 15 coming up. All I am going to do is get the coal coming back on again. Right, and we are going to drop the uh, brake down. We've got this 15 limit just coming up, but we're only doing about 19, so we're fine. We're pulling off here so that we can go into the uh, into the yard. Let's release the brakes. I'm going to put the cut off forward a little bit. We're running a bit slow for that kind of cut off. Put the brakes back in running. Water level still looking okay. So we'll be okay on water, I think, until we get out of here. So what we're doing is we're dropping off um, this uh, cut of wagons, um, and then we're going to pick up another one uh, and take them somewhere else. So we're uh, dropping off at Newton Cat Colliery down there. set the uh, the points up so we're all we're all good to go we do need however to watch what we're doing because again it takes ages to stop and there's these buffery things at the end here um, and the train doesn't like going through them <laughs> once we get these wagons dropped off I shall uh, check on the fire and see how that's doing Uh, fire is still growing. I've just checked it on the F5 hub. Alright, roll this last bit in. This is our new set of wagons that we've got to bring back the other way. We haven't got shunt brake vans or anything. That's all been set up for us, which is handy. Now, in order to fit this in, we've actually got to come round the corner a little bit. We've got quite a long train, as you can see down there. Make sure the back of the train is clear. It is. Superb. Now we need to uh, just set the uh, handbrake on the, that and then we can uncouple. Right, check the points are set correctly and run forwards into the head shunt. Right, so we are coming here. We're going to come forwards here and then run back again. Release the brakes. And while that's happening, let's just check where we're at. You notice how it's almost lined up with these three now? So we're probably about far enough for that. So I'm going to uh, put the shovel off and shut the firebox door. Excellent. Right, let's get moving. Put the brakes back into running. How's the water? Water is still looking good. This is definitely my favourite vantage point for driving. You get great visibility, but you can still see what's going on in the cab. I, must, I tend to drive with the keyboard if I haven't got my rail driver to hand, but that you can obviously drive with the mouse if you wish. We just want the whole train in here. While the stop thing is going, I'm just going to ease the brakes off so we can get moving a bit faster. Now we need to change that point and that point so that we can come back round past and then come forward to get our other wagons. Right, let's just wait for the timing. Let's get this open, it's a bit, a bit, a bit warm in here. Change the points to allow you to reverse through Newton Cap Colliery 3. After passing the end of the siding, change the points again to allow you to run forwards and couple the front of the locomotive to the Palbrick wagons and brake van. Brakes all the way off, bring the cut off all the way back, 
and a little bit of power. Remember, when you're running light engine in 15s like this, it's always shut your regulator off long before the 15 because you'd be surprised how long it keeps accelerating yeah, for based on just on what was in the steam chest. One of the tips actually is that uh, when you're trying to start off, if you've got heavy load, when you're running light engine like this, is to f pulse the, the regulator. Apply it and release, apply it and put it back to zero again. And you'll get a bit of power in the steam chest and get you moving. And then you can just keep applying more and less more so that you can, uh, you can build up speed. Until you're running at a reasonable speed, then you can start leaving it on if you have difficulty with grip. Right, so let's get back here, watch what we're doing on the brake. Okay, we've cleared that. We need to change that point and go and get these wagons. So, move it forward, release the brake. And a little power, steam chest starts building up. Put the back into running. All is good. Right, again, we need to be a little bit careful here. These are heavy wagons, but you still don't want to hit them too hard. This is a very heavy loco. <laughs> so if I find it needs a little power, I'm literally just applying the regulator and taking it straight back off again. Right, we've coupled to that. Coupling to secure, reverse the locomotive back out of Newton Cap onto the main line and all the way to Consett where the bricks are to be delivered to the main yard. All right, so uh, how's the brakes? Let's get, make sure the brakes are off. All right, and put it in reverse. Quick check of water level. We should probably get some water in. But since we're only gonna be using a little bit of steam, I'm gonna use the uh, live, the live injector. We're only going to be doing a little bit of steam for a little while. There you go. Let's have a look at some of these wagons. These are the brick Halbrick wagons. Just the sounds on those, that's fantastic. Ease the cut off forward a bit. We can't speed up yet, but we will be able to soon. Almost up to the 15. Just a reminder of how. Just a reminder of how carefully you have to. Uh, watch the uh, throttle on this loco if I wind it up to maximum okay I can't do it at this point <laughs> never mind then I was trying to get it to wheel slip again water levels coming up I think we can probably stop the water injectors at this point What we should do is have a quick look at this fire. Yep, fire is still looking good.
All right, we've got the 45 limit, so let's get um, sped up. We have got a 25 and then a 15 coming up. That's going to somewhat limit how adventurous we can be with our acceleration. Ah, so, I, so Pete has just told me, Pete has, uh, from Victory Works has told me that it's because it's not raining now. That's why it was more slippy earlier on. So if it starts raining again, I'll have another go. Essentially, it's based on the weather, which is really awesome. So if it's wet or if it's snowing, the wheel slip becomes more sensitive uh, and you need to be that much more careful with it. I'm paranoid in case I've left that firebox door open. Right, we've got a 15 coming up, so I'm going to slow down for that in just a minute. This is still another heavy train. It's not quite as long as the last one, but it's, uh, it's still quite heavy. So we watch the uh, brake coming down. That should be more than enough. We're almost there anyway. That's it. We're down to 15. We have a green light. distance signal is on so I just need to be very careful of what, what's going to happen at the next one so I cleared this block and we need to check the next one just to make sure all is still good so we're in 15 at the moment as we come back through Bishop Auckland you know it's just raining again got a green signal so we're actually clear to come through. A Gronk over there in the yard. seeing out of this side when you're looking at signals is a little bit more tricky but <laughs> looks like we have a signal yes that's our signal over there <laughs> there's too many signals I don't know which one's mine we just lost another thousand points or another two thousand points so we're doing good here aiming for a high score is golfing rules is what I'm applying here. Golfing rules, folks. Golfing rules. Right, once we get into this 45, we can, uh, we can uh, open it up a little bit. We're just going to get back onto the line. Where are we, just in case you are wondering? We are here at Bishop Auckland. We've just been up to here, and we're coming back here. So that's the, the Weirdale and Teesdale route. And we're going up there, if memory serves. Apply a little bit of power. Water's okay. The firebox was okay. We're speeding now, that's fabulous. I'm just going to let it speed. It's only 0.3 of a mile an hour. All right. Oh, it bit there and lost it. Have a flyby, shall we?
Right, I just realised actually it's not showing any lights on the back because we changed direction and we didn't actually change our... Uh, we need to set that up to, uh, to say that we've got lights on the back. There you go, we've now got lights and so let's turn them on. Quick look at the boiler pressure. We're a bit low. Water level is a bit low. So I'm going to cut the power a little bit here. Get the. Uh, I ought to check to see if there's a tunnel behind me. Ooh, good save. That looks like a bridge, but uh, let's at least get some uh, water going. I keep using the live injector here because I keep wanting to apply power when we're not doing anything. Or apply water when we're doing anything. Ideally, you want to be using the steam injector, the exhaust injector. Check that firebox out, see how we're doing down here. Yeah, we're a bit low. Operating the shovel, if you're used to um, doing the steam yourself though, by the way, operating the shovel is the equivalent of the stoking command, um, the R command, if I remember rightly. I'm not using much, so I'm not going to switch it to the, like, the exhaust injector because we're really not using much power. Kind of hoping I can get, we've got a bit of a hill to climb, so I'm kind of trying to hope that we can get some boiler pressure back, because it really is uh, dying at the moment. How's our water level doing? It's coming up, slowly. Boiler pressure is leveled out at least. Right. Not having the injectors on is going to definitely help things, I think. Yep, boiler pressure is coming up. Get that boiler pressure up before we get to... Uh... Budge 4, is there any AI in the scenario? There is! I've missed it all because I'm running late. <laughs> there are two or three other trains. There was actually a 101 right at the very beginning of the scenario. Um, and I think there's been at least two of these. But driving from this angle, all the trains are coming on the other side of you, so you don't really see them. But yes, there were three or four AI trains in total. I think there's at least one more to see yet. In fact, I know there is. There it is there. Right there. This is one of the, uh, the the cleaner lined ones, not the worn one. See how that boiler pressure is doing? Are we coming up? Looks like it. Yeah, we've got the we've got probably too much coal in there now. Our biomass, so we can get that switched off. back into a fairly well ideal position and just in time for the hill I say ideal of course it would be nice if we had more boiler pressure but we're back up to nearly 200 psi so that's good a 
ease the power on as we start hitting this hill. We've got quite a uh, quite a rise to go. And just at the top of the hill is where we finish the scenario. Running uh, down on speed, but uh, the one in 44 gradient. It's uh, it's a it's a long climb. Every time I've done this scenario so far, I've made it up the hill, so I'm guaranteed to not make it up the hill tonight. Here we go, not far, we've got a 15 limit here. I'm actually going to ease up on the power, start slowing down, let gravity do some of the slowing down for us. Just to check the brakes on. So we've got to cross over a line here in the, the junctions at 15, which is why we're slowing down. Get the brakes off before we lose too much speed. Bring the cutoff back, apply a little power just to get that speed back. How are we doing on water? Any kind of problem here? Oh, that's a bit low. <laughs> we're nearly finished, but uh, let's at least finish with the water again. Actually, we're using a lot of power, so we can use the exhaust, the live exhaust, etc. Put the tap on first. No. We'll just use the live steam. Because we're going to be coasting this last bit. This is the light, the, 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 we've got the light on the left there, you can't see it. Because we're coming off here. And we're stopping just at Crook Main Line up, just at the, the uh, this waypoint up here. Now we've got a red light at the end of that waypoint, so we can't afford to, lead, to miss it. I'm going to just stop that now. We've got enough to finish the scenario. That's all we need. Red light. Stopping probably a little bit short of the red light, but... Any, any, anything, any landing you can walk away from, that's what I say. <laughs> now, is it going to take uh, probably about 5,000 points away from me? I'm going to get minus 8,000. What do you think? Minus 8,000? That's pitiful. I actually got a positive score the first time I played it, and I've not managed a positive score since. <laughs> oh, we only lost another 2,000. Excellent. So it looks like you might be here for a while waiting for a passenger service to pass. Such is the life of a freight crew. Time for a cuppa. And that sounds like a cracking idea. There you go then. So that was the, uh, the peppercorn. Let me give you a quick roundup of uh, what we've been looking at then. Um, 
find my instructions. There we go. Um, right, so it comes with the uh, Pe Peppercorn BR Class K1 locomotive and tender in three liveries. You get the uh, BR Lined Black Worn uh, livery, uh, the BR Lined Black livery, sort of the clean, uh, cleaner one, and the LNER Green livery, uh, which is the preserved model. Uh, it's, uh, there's wagons in the pack as well. There are a good selection of them. Double 13 ton bolster wagon, single 13 ton bolster wagon, ex LNER gas tank wagon, BR pull brick brick carrying wagons, BR 22 ton plate wagons, BR trestle AA wagons, uh, ex LNER private owner mineral wagons. There are a selection of five plank and seven plank ones, uh, private owner and BR gray. Eight scenarios for the Weirdale and Teesdale uh, network route add-on and uh, a wide range of quick drive consists that you can apply uh, out of the box in your quick drive scenarios. Um, the scenarios range from sort of 35 to uh, one here is one hour and 10 minutes. Um, and there's one scenario for the LNER green, the rest of them are for the, uh, the black versions of the uh, of the locomotive. You've got simple mode for driving it, standard mode, so simple mode is just like the simple controls, just the go stop HUD. You've got the standard mode if you want to uh, use the HUD. Uh, it's a more realistic experience but it's not the full experience. And then if you want to do what I've just done and run it in advanced mode where you're driving absolutely everything by it manually, then you can do that. You press control A to toggle whether advanced mode is on. Um, there's a wide range of controls, there's the blowdown on the, um, on the you know, water gauge, um, number of animations inside the cab such as the windows and so forth um, and there's also customizations and variations of the loco that you can get through numbering it when you actually put it into scenarios so whether or not you want the air brake gauge to appear in the cab whether or not you want a headboard or whether you want name boards what number it is all of that stuff you can configure um, via the um, uh, the numbering uh, and some of it with the control keys you can actually configure it on the fly as well. You've got the uh, normal uh, control one two three four for controlling what head code you want on the front with the lighting um, and you've got full realistic um, physics for overfilling the loco for um, wheel slip and so forth. Uh, and also not using the, if you don't use the cylinder cocks when you're supposed to, then the, uh, you'll blow the loco up. Right? Uh, what happens is that we get water in the cylinder cocks, um, in the, sorry, in the cylinders, the seam chest. And then when the pistons move, um, the water doesn't compress like steam does, and it blows the ends off of the, uh, um, off the cylinders. So, uh, and that, at that point, the locomotive isn't really much use until it has quite an expensive repair job done on it. So... Um, so that's it, that's all there is. This is the Peppercorn K1, it's by Victory Works, who was on the chat this evening. Thank you very much to uh, Victory Works for uh, stopping in and joining us this evening. Um, let me put it back to this. So, I've just remembered, um, there is one other thing that we need to do, isn't there? Uh, and I forgot to load it up, so you'll have to bear with me for just a minute uh, while I uh, get the... Uh, while I get the giveaway system up and running. Um, so, we need a couple of keywords. I've got a couple of keywords in mind and I shall get them working for you just as soon as it says it is connected. Uh, one of the other questions I saw, by the way, at the beginning of the stream was, what routes is this loco good for? Well, it obviously comes with scenarios for Weirdale and Teesdale and it's superb for that route. It's also good for the West Highland Line extension and West Highland Line South. Um, and it comes with the Jacobite headboard, uh, which you can, uh, which is highly appropriate uh, for those routes. So. Um, yeah, you can use the Jacobite headboard, run it on West Highland Line Extension or West Highland Line South, and it will be right at home. And of course, being an LNER loco, you could probably be a little bit flexible and run it on many of the uh, LNER routes. I'm trying to ad lib here while this thing connects and fails to connect. Um, it will be with us in a minute, folks. Um, so let me just tell you about uh, the giveaway. We have uh, VictoryWorks have kindly uh, offered up two copies of the K1, which will be available for you when it is released. Um, and uh, once it's released, then um, well, up to um, 28 days after release, we will get in touch with you with a Steam code um, and uh, instructions on uh, how to install it. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is type a keyword into the chat. It's still not connected. Uh, once it's, uh, once it's uh, and then you type that keyword in, that will enter you into the, uh, into the giveaway and you can... Um, 
uh, I'll then press the button and um, it will then tell me who the winner is and we'll do that twice. Uh, when uh, we have a winner, um, you'll be contacted via Twitch messaging. So it'll be, if you look in uh, Twitch, there's a messaging menu and in there there's an uh, inbox, there's an outbox and then there's another one sometimes called other. If you can see one that says other uh, and your message comes into other, they're possibly not following the channel, you should do that. Follow the channel. Press that follow button right now. It's down there somewhere. Right, so it's connected at last. Let me type a keyword in. So we're going to start off nice and easy. The first keyword is K1. K1, lowercase letters. <laughs> Everyone's been typing in the wrong keyword. And I'm going to upset you in a minute. <laughs> so yes, K1 is the first keyword. So uh, yes, if you can type K1, okay, well, make sure it's all in lowercase letters, please. If you type it in uppercase letters, it won't count. Um, if you think you've typed it in incorrectly, then you need to type it in again. Uh, it won't cause any problems if you type it in again. Uh, I'll just give that a minute to uh, do its thing. And, uh, and then I will call that. Doing the countdown. Right, so our first winner this evening is PVRS Productions 2015. Congratulations. Let me make a note of your details. So that's PVRS Productions 2015. Congratulations to you. Um, and our next keyword, you already know what the next keyword is. Peppercorn, P-E-P-P-E-R-C-O-R-N. All lowercase letters, please. P-E-P-P-E-R-C-O-R-N. Make sure you type in peppercorn into the chat uh, in lowercase letters. No other symbols or anything else on the same, just, just the word peppercorn, or the name, sorry, peppercorn. And um, that will enter you into the giveaway. So while we're doing that, just one more reminder. Once the, so we, the, the product isn't available yet, well, once the, uh, the K1 is available, then within 28 days of the launch of the, uh, the K1, then um, we will be in touch with you via um, Twitch messaging. Uh, so look in your inbox and the other, and it will, um, you'll see the instructions there. You'll get a code that you know, add some instructions on how you activate that on Steam. Doing the countdown again. Roll in. Wild Sam 18. Congratulations, you are our second winner. So, PVRS Productions 2015 and Wild Sam 18. Congratulations, you've both won copies of the K1, which will be coming to you uh, within 28 days after the uh, product is launched. Um, that's all we have time for tonight. Uh, I've not seen any questions come up, so I hope that you've, um, I, I guess that uh, VictoryWorks have been answering your questions directly. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, demo of the Loco, and uh, I know I'm just really enjoying driving it, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what everyone comes up with uh, once that one's released. Thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget, uh, next week is our, um, on Thursday, is the um, first look stream for TS 2016. And Friday is uh, the advanced preview at 5 o'clock. So Thursday, 7 p.m., Friday at 5 p.m. Um, and uh, those are the two official streams. Thanks very much, everybody. I will see you next week, and uh, we'll have some more train fun. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.